In this video, I want to show you how to fully set up your Epson ET2980 printer from the very beginning. I have simply unboxed the printer, so let's get started. First thing, let's remove all the blue tape that you'll find on the side, on the front and on the back of the unit. Next, we're gonna connect the power cable. Connect this end over here on the lower right side. And now connect the other end in your power outlet. Go ahead and press the power button once. This control panel is adjustable in case you're standing up or sitting down. Choose your language. You're going to navigate using the up and down button and press the OK to confirm. So I will select English and press OK. Press OK. Do you want to set up from mobile device? Select no, I'll show you how to do it without it. And then I will um, instruct you on how to connect your mobile phone. Here you can select reject or approve. Essentially what it is, is simply Epson asking you to track your data so they can improve their product. Um, you can reject by pressing this button over here. If you forgot to remove some protective material, it will ask you to do it now and uh, let me show you. There's nothing, what you can do is to open this compartment the way I did it. And maybe you forgot to remove this blue tape over here. So go ahead and remove it. Press OK. Select Yes. Press OK. And now it's time to fill up the ink tanks. Let me demonstrate how it is done. Press OK, OK, and we will be back on the screen and press this button over here after we filled the ink. So the first step is to open this top compartment. You're going to put your fingers on the sides over here and lift. It's the compartment that comes with the screen that you can tilt. After doing this, simply tilt towards the front, this casing. This is where the ink tanks are located. And it's very important to input the right color in each of them and not to mix them up. Over here, we got some instructions. So we have black in the first one, cyan in the second one, magenta in the third one, and finally the yellow right over here. Let me demonstrate how this is working. First, let me remove the ink bottles from their packaging. We're going to start with the black ink bottle since it's the first one. You're going to lift this blue lid, unscrew the lid on the ink bottle. And now don't be afraid, the ink will not leak unless it is plugged in the ink tank. So. Take the bottle and you can place it like this or the other way as you see it has these two prongs on each side and two space over here to place the prongs so the bottle doesn't fall down so you're going to simply turn it upside down and insert it in the first position you don't have to squeeze it you don't have to jam it in I don't know if you can hear but once you have inserted it the ink will flow naturally in the ink tank and you can watch the ink tank filling up by looking through the small window over here at this point do not touch anything let it fill up till the top usually it takes around a minute for each ink bottle to empty themselves if the ink stop flowing while the ink tank is not fully fl um, filled what you can do is to simply try to shake it but really gently this way it happened to me once in the past and by doing this I was able to unclog the ink bottle. Once you don't hear any ink flowing and you look at these ink tanks and the ink level is right under the arrow because there's an arrow right over here. This is the top of the tank. This means that it's fully filled. You're going to take the bottle out and again don't be afraid there will be no leakage as you see right now. I mean, if you start shaking the bottle, yes, there is a chance that you're going to spill ink. But if not, nothing, uh, it won't be messy. Take the cap and close it. Make sure it clicks in place. 
there will always be a bit of ink left in the bottle itself. I always suggest storing this ink in a dark uh, environment, so in a closet preferably, away from any heat source. Once you finish filling the ink tank, close it and make sure it clicks over here like that. Now let's go to the next one, which is cyan. Open the ink bottle and simply place it upside down. You can again place it this way or the other way. It does not matter. Here we go. Do not squeeze the bottle. This is what it's saying over here. Next we have the magenta. And finally we have the yellow. As you see, even on these color bottles, there's still a bit of ink left in them. At the end, close down this lid, and then from the top lid, you just have to pull it up and then let it down. If it doesn't close completely, like it did over here, do the same thing. Now we're gonna press this button, fill the tank with the ink and hold down the question mark for five seconds. We have filled the tanks, so we're gonna hold this button, the question mark button for five seconds. Initialize, yes, so we're gonna press this button and we're gonna wait 11 minutes as it's saying over here. Do not touch anything, we'll be back. Press OK once it is done. And now we will adjust the print heads of this printer. As it says over here, if you click on the lower arrow, you'll need to load letter size paper or A4 size plain paper. So let me show you how the paper is loaded in this model. And then we will go over here. We'll need to go on the back of the printer. This is where the paper input is located. You can see that there is a tray right over here that if you stick your finger and you pull up, it will come out and it will rest on its side. You can also open this small cover this way. And you're going to notice there's two paper guides over here, one blue, one back, black. If you want to input a letter size paper or A4, you simply need to drag both of these to the extremity. Once you push one, the other one will go as well on the other extremity. Take your stack of paper, make sure it's aligned, and you simply have to glide it in between those two guides just like that and let it rest on the small plastic piece over here. If in the future you're gonna print on smaller paper like like four by six or even letters, envelopes, you can simply bring these two guides closer together and slide your paper in between them. Now that we have inserted some paper, we're gonna press the start button and a paper will get printed. Now we need to take this paper that got printed and place it on the scanner. Let me show you in which way it needs to stand. So you're gonna open this scanner glass and you're gonna notice there is an arrow right over here. It simply means that you need to take your paper, place it facing down with this corner where you see a black triangle where the arrow is. So place your paper and simply bring the paper until both of these corners are touching. Then close the scan lid and you're gonna press the OK button. And press this button. The adjustment is complete, press OK. You can make network settings from Wi-Fi setup. Press OK. And now we are on the main menu of your printer. You're gonna navigate using the left and right arrow 
to change between the different settings that are presented to you. And once you enter in some of these settings, example settings, press OK, and then you're gonna use the up and down arrow. To go back, use the back button. Let me show you how to connect this printer to your phone and also how to print and scan. So let's get started. The first step is to connect your printer to the Wi-Fi network. The same Wi-Fi network has your iPhone is currently connected to. So let's get started. First, press the home button. Then you're gonna press the left side arrow two times until you get Wi-Fi setup. Press OK. Select the first option, which is Wi-Fi. Click OK. Select Wi-Fi Setup Wizard. The printer will now search for all the different Wi-Fi networks that are around it. Once it has found some of them, you're going to use the up and down arrow to navigate. Once you've found your Wi-Fi network, OK, highlight it and press OK. Now it's time to type the password using the arrows. Once you are done, select OK and press the OK button. The printer will start connecting to your Wi-Fi network. You're going to get setup complete and the message will disappear. This means that your printer is now connected. Next step is to go on the App Store of your iPhone and you need to search for the Epson Smart Panel app. Go ahead and download the app. Open the app. Press Agree. Press OK. It will search for your printer. Press Next. Select Allow while using the app. Select Next. Select Allow and your Epson EcoTank should appear in this list. Here it is, ET2980 series. Tap on it and you'll get connection is complete. Press OK. Select over here on the lower right side, use tiles. And if there is an update pending for your printer, you'll need to click start if you want to install it. If you prefer keeping the version that is currently on, press cancel. This is the main menu that you will interact every time you want to print and scan. Now, this is not totally true. You can also print without using this app. For example, I'm in my picture gallery on my iPhone and if I want to print a picture, I simply need to click on the lower left side on this logo that is a square with an arrow pointing up. Then I need to drag down and select print. From here I'll be able to select my printer on the top ET2980 and I'll be able to print this picture without using the app. If you decide to use the app, you'll get more options. So if you're printing pictures, I still think this app is valuable. For example, over here you have print if you want to print. Click on it and you'll have to select print photos or print documents. I'll select document. Select the file on your iPhone that you wish to print. And now to change the settings, press on the lower left side. And as I said, you're going to have a bit more settings to play with that can improve the quality of your print. So over here we have the paper size, the media type. So if you're printing on glossy paper, this is where you need to change it. And absolutely you need to do it. If not, the colors will look messy. So in my case, I'm, I'm printing on plain paper. So I'll leave it like this. Then we have layout over here. If you want borders on your pictures or document or without borders, you can print borderless, print quality, and this is very important. So if you're printing anything that has a lot of small details, like a picture, maybe you're printing a painting um, or something again with many, many details, select high. If you don't select high, I think you'll be deceived by the print quality. 
Um, if you're simply printing text with some graphics, like the one I will do in just a few seconds, you won't have to do this, okay? The standard is enough. And then you have paper source, by default is automatic, and I think you should just leave it like this. Finally, do you want to print in color or black and white? I'll leave it to color and the number of copies. I just want one, so I'll leave it like that. And now press the print button. Make sure you have some paper inserted in your printer. Here we go, we got our print out. Now let me show you how to scan. And for this, you absolutely need to have the app. Open the scan lid. Let me remove this document that was already here. Let's say I want to scan this one. You're going to place it facing down with the top part of your page. You see, this is how you read it. So this is the top part towards the right side. And then you're going to notice there is an arrow over here. This means that we need to bring the paper. So the corner of the paper touches the corner with an arrow. Close the scan lid. On the app itself, you're going to select the scan button. And now we have a few different settings. So the document size, if you want in color or black and white, the scan resolution by default is 200. But if you're scanning things with a lot of details, select 600 or 300. This will give you again, more fine details in your scan. The scan will also take a lot more time to complete if you select a higher number. But in my case, I'm simply scanning a text document with some graphics. 200 is enough. Then we have remove background. I don't think many people will use this feature. Automatic rotation. It's okay. Just leave it the way it is. And finally, in which format do you want the file to be in? You have PDF, JPEG, and TIFF. Most people will simply use the two first ones. At the end, press start and wait a few seconds. This is a preview of the scan. It's not saved yet. Don't quit the app. Over here, you can delete the scan. By the way, you can zoom in, zoom out, just to make sure that it looks great for you. You can crop in case you want to keep just a certain portion of the scan and not the whole thing. And you can rotate. If you want to scan multiple pages and combine them in one single PDF document, it's time to input the next page and press the plus button. It will scan the next one and you'll be able to glue them all together. Press next. And now you can edit the name of this document that will be saved on your iPhone. So you can give it any name that you wish. Press done and press save if you want to save it on your phone or press the square with an arrow pointing up if you want to share it on social media or with your contacts. So this is it. I hope my video was helpful. If it is, leave a comment down below. Tell me it was useful. If not, well, leave a comment as well. I want to know why you didn't like it. Subscribe, check my Amazon links if you want to get some paper some ink or even a brand new printer. Every time you go through my links, I get a very small commission from Amazon and it helps my channel. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.